Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's part two in a two-part video of making paper feathers. Now in the first video, I showed you the process of just making paper feathers, generic paper feathers, using either scrapbook paper, copy paper, craft paper, or any paper you could find. It's based on a tutorial that you can find at ultimatepapermache.com. And I'll include the link below because I think it's a great channel and really inspiring with a lot of her projects. In today's video though, I'm gonna show you how I paint and try and make that feather look like a Blue Jays feather. It's really simple to do. I use sponges, some paint brushes. I even use a gel pen and a micron pen, but you can take it as far as you want. You can modify it as well, change the colors, make it whimsical, whatever you'd like. So let's get started. So to paint the Blue Jay feather, I have that paper mache feather and I'll link that below. That's part one of this series. So I have my paper mache feather here cut out to the approximate size that I want. And now I'm gonna show you how I paint it. I just use four colors of craft paint. I have a brown, a white, a dark blue, and a black. So I spread them out on my mat and I use mostly sponges. I'll use a flat brush, about a three quarter inch brush, and a very small detailing brush. These are optional. Then I have a white gel pen and a very thin marker. Again, these are all optional and you can stop at any point. I'm just gonna show you how I fully embellish my feather. So to start with, I just take my dark brown paint here and I just put it on the end of a sponge because I wanna get the under color first. So then I just sponge gently not globby, but just very gently. You can see I'm leaving a lot of texture on this feather and I'll just pounce all over it. And I'll wind up doing the same thing on both sides. I'm just gonna show you one side though. Now, because this is matte acrylic paint and craft paint, it dries pretty quickly. For the Blue Jay feather, half of the feather is brown and the other half is that beautiful blue and black stripes. There's a little bit of white in there. So now I wanna take the blue and work on the other side of the feather. And I'll take this and just squeeze it out. I'll take a little bit of a sponge here. It doesn't matter the shape. This happens to be triangular shape, but that's only because I cut it into that shape. It really doesn't matter. And now I'm gonna be careful and I'm gonna just splotch up the entire length of that feather. I'm going right over the brown and I just wanna go through half of that feather. I can see where that wire left the center of the feather, but I'm just pouncing just up and down here. It has a slight angle. I'm gonna take my three quarter inch brush and take a little bit of that blue and on the brush, I'll just spread it onto my bristles. And now again, maintaining that curved shape, I'm just gonna gently brush up I'm not trying to fill it all in, but I'm just making little areas here that have that blue. Rinse out my brush and I wanna let this dry. So now that this is dried, I can start building my colors. Because it's dry, the colors will build on top of each other, they won't blend. Now, the key points to remember here is I don't have this side filled in all brown because I don't want it to look uniform. Same thing over here, I have my little dark splotches of blue, but they're not uniform. You can see that background, a little bit of texture coming through, and you're not really sure what you're seeing. So now I'm gonna go back to that three quarter inch brush, and I'm gonna rinse it out, the one I use the blue for, and dry it thoroughly. Now with a dry brush, I'm gonna take just a little bit of paint on my bristles, and then just wipe them off. I want the brush to just have a little bit of paint. And now I'm gonna make a very uneven line. And it's not really a line, but that's the best way to think of it, where I'm just brushing up at an angle. So it's kind of moving the direction of the feather. And I go right to the end, those blue splotches that I made, and I'm just brushing up. And over here, I'll just create a little bit more. Then I'll come back and just brush down because I don't want the lines to be even. I don't want anything about this to be symmetrical. I can even come in here and put in a little line just by pouncing. So then I'll rinse my brush off again and I wanna do the same thing but with the white. 
I'll let this dry first. Before I do the white, the highlight on this feather, I wanna work on this side with the brown, so I'm just gonna flip it over. I washed my brush and dried it thoroughly, and now I'm gonna pick up some of that brown. I don't want a lot of paint on my brush. I almost want just a little bit. And I'll start right at that center line that has the wire, and I'm just gonna pull out from it. So as you can see, the edges of that feather are white, but the center is the darkest part. And I'm just pulling that pigment out. I'll flip it over and do the same thing on this side, right at the bottom here, just like that. I'll rinse my brush, and before it dries, I'm gonna take my very tiny brush, and you can also use your marker for this, as long as the paint is dry. And that's one of the reasons I'm using my brush, because the paint is still wet and I wanna paint it. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black on my brush, and this is the liner, and a little bit of brown, so I can make a dark brown. And then with a very sharp point, I'm just gonna outline that wire right from the base to the top. And I'll do this on either side of that wire. It emphasizes that wire, creates a little shadow, and that's an important part of the feather. You don't have to paint that wire completely. That's up to you, and that's where you get a little variation in every feather that is made. I'll flip it over and outline the other side. Start at the base and just continue to work my way up, getting very close to that wire. Once I get to the top of it, I just wanna blend it out just a little bit. I'll take one of the sponges I use, just one of the clean parts, and just help to blend that out creating just a little less of an edge. So now I need to let this feather dry and we can start adding our white highlights. So now I like to do something very subtle with my white paint and my three quarter inch brush. I just dab a little bit to the tips of the brush, very little white paint. And I'm just gonna come to the top of each of those little black areas and just dab it ever so slightly. It just barely shows up. It's a little messy, it's not a perfect line. It's just a little bit of a highlight. And I'm quite happy with the way that looks. I'm gonna dab my brush in that white again, and again, blend off most of it. I'll turn my piece to the side, and right from the center, I'm just gonna pull out and let it drag off the end of that feather. Come back in, grab just a little bit more pigment, and again, I don't want a lot of pigment. I'd rather have less pigment than more. And just pull that across that feather. I can go back in. And as I'm pulling it across, I'm also trying to curve it up so it follows that length of that feather. I can come back in, get a little more pigment, brush a little off, and just play with it just to create those feathers. So I'm quite happy with the way that looks. There are two steps that I like to do just to finish off the feather. So I'll just take a little bit of the white on my finger and dab it off. I just want the slightest highlight and I'm just barely touching the top of that feather. And now to really complete it, this is the part that can be a little messy. And this is the reason that I like the silicone mat. So I take a larger sponge and I dab it in the black and then I dab most of it off, but I'm getting a good portion covering the top of the sponge. And now at the very edge, I just wanna to barely touch the sponge to the edge of this feather. And I'll go all the way around. And this creates an interesting border. It's not a perfect line. It's just a little hint of shadow that it captures the edge and really emphasizes it. And I think it adds a little level of realism to the feather. I'm going to have this dry, and then we'll come back and use our pens to really knock out the details in this feather. 
Okay, so now my feather, or my faux feather, has dried. You can leave it just like it is, and it looks very effective. Or you could take your pens. This is the Micron 005. This is actually very small. And you can just make a few little hairs here so that they look like feathers coming out from the center. And you want them to come out at an angle so that they're kind of going up the length of the feather. Now I like to do a few scattered throughout, always coming from that center point though. And then I'll go back in and fill in some areas so it doesn't look spaced out or sparse. You don't have to get it going all the way across the feather at varying lengths is best. And then you could always come in from the outside and just create some lines and the eye will connect them so they don't have to be perfect. We also have that darker edge which makes for a very interesting result right on that feather. It kind of fills in the details and makes it look less perfect. And then I'll just make a few on this side. Because the blue side is a little darker on the outside, I don't have to worry about making the lines coming from the outside. I just want to create a few coming in here and then maybe just a few. And the eye will create the remainder for me. So now that I have that done, I'm going to take my white gel pen and I like to do just a few lines as well. Again, not so many because I'm just trying to create a little bit of highlight, a little light, come in from both sides of the feather once again. And the same thing over here. I want to create a small, thin little line, always from the center of that feather. and then just a few from the outside. And that's how I create my Blue Jay feathers, using the painting technique, using a lot of sponges, some brushwork, and then just a few pens. So that's how I make a paper Blue Jay's feather. I use acrylic paints, some tools, and different supplies. Now, I can make the feather any size I want. I made it larger than an actual Blue Jay's feather, but that's just something I wanted to do. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And be sure to click that little bell so you get notified of future videos in my series. Thanks for joining me today.